I've got a Synology 1815 Plus here. I had repaired this maybe two and a half years ago. It had the problem of the flaky on and off problem, which is a due to a faulty transistor on the motherboard. And the solution is to put a 1K resistor over two of the solder pads, and that fixes it. The problem is it's a temporary solution. Eventually, uh, the transistor totally goes bad, and now I have to replace the transistor today. But I had asked myself, why does that transistor fail? So I started doing some research, because there's a bunch of people talking about just putting that resistor over those two solder pads, and it, you know, it solves the problem. It turns out there's a faulty voltage or an out-of-spec voltage coming from the power supply, which is then fed directly into that resistor. And apparently that's what causes the transistor to fail, is that out-of-spec voltage coming out of the power supply. So today, not only am I going to replace the transistor, I'm going to open the power supply up, which is on the other side of the unit, and change a resistor in there to get the voltage more in line so that hopefully it does not damage that transistor any longer. So it's a bit lengthier today to repair both the transistor and the resistor because everything is surface mount technology today and surface mount stuff is for me harder. I'm more old school and it's just a little bit harder to deal with on removing those components. All right, so we have a bunch of screws that we have to take out. You need a Phillips driver for these. And I'm not going to show removing all the screws, but, you know, it's the usual screws. You have to go for the corners first, get these out here and here and here. And there's a couple on the bottom, and then you can pull this lid off. We need to take the bottom screws off because the circuit board needs to be wedged out of there and we're just going to slightly push this metal forward to help get that board out. So you pull the lid back and then up and that's how that comes off. That's, you know, that's pretty easy. But to get this out, because of these Ethernet ports, this back plate is in the way. So we're going to have to loosen all the screws on the back plate so we can slightly bend it out so we can pull this circuit board out. So there are some additional screws here that we have to remove. And see, we just need that flex in there turn this to the side so you can see it better. We need to have this flex out. With that flexing out, that'll give us enough room to get this circuit board out. The board has a couple screws that we have to remove, and it also has two ribbon cables that we have to uh, unplug. So these screws here all have to come out. Now we have to disconnect the ribbon cable, that's the gray cable here, and the power supply cable. The gray cable comes out really easy, there's no difficulty getting that out. You pop the edges, you push them to the left and to the right on the side, push them outward, and then this cable just pops right off. This cable can be a little stubborn, the power supply, there's a little tongue here that you pry up and then you push that connector, you know, that way towards the other end of the unit. And sometimes this cable can give me a bit of a headache. Alright, so actually I didn't have to remove the cable tie. Alright, so now that we have the board completely disconnected, the board is connected to the SATA bus. There's an edge connector in there and there's another small connector over here in this bottom left corner. So to get this board out you want to pull the board towards you to pop it out of that edge connector. And you'll, you'll feel that pop. You saw it and heard it probably. And then just work it out very carefully. Oh there's also, I'm sorry, there's a third connector we have to remove. This is to the fans. This connector also has to come out.
And there we go. Now we've got the board out so we can work on the transistor that has to be replaced. And so if you know, if you had seen my other video, this is the area we're going to be working on. It's right next to the edge connector. It has the power supply. There's that 1K resistor that I soldered over those two solder pads. And let's see if we get this from a different angle. There's a, res there's a transistor underneath there. It's kind of blocked by the resistor. So today, we're going to be removing this resistor to get to the transistor. And then we have to replace the transistor. And then we'll go for the power supply next and replace the resistor in there. Also, while we have this apart, there's a watch battery on this motherboard that is in the the top right of the motherboard when you're looking at the edge connector in the bottom right. That's a CR1220. Uh, depending on when you last replace that, I would replace it. You can get them really cheap on Amazon or eBay. And just while we have it apart, I'm going to change that battery out because I can't recall the last time I changed it. I had mentioned the battery before. It turns out if you have the board positioned like this, at about the 10 o'clock position and the 4 o'clock position are two solder pads for that battery holder. So I put my voltmeter here and I'm reading 1.1 volts, which is basically a dead battery. These batteries are 3 volts, so I definitely want to change that battery out. The next few steps, I'm going to have to use a still camera to show what I'm going to do. My video camera does not have a good macro capability and my hand is going to get it in the way anyway with the soldering iron. So I'll show you with some still pictures what you have to do to get that transistor out and eventually what you have to do to get the resistor off the uh, power supply. And again, it's surface mount technology so it is a, a bit of a pain to unsolder that stuff. That's the best focus I can get with my video camera. I'll take a still of this, but see that little black speck on this penny? That's the transistor that we have to replace. So if you're not comfortable soldering with service mount devices, uh, you might want to find a friend who has some skill set in doing this. You'll also need a, a fine pair of tweezers to help deal with this because you're going to have to hold that down while you solder it. All right, I removed that 1K resistor so I can get to the Q4. The motherboard has a little label on it here called Q4. Again, I will take a still picture because this is, this is as close as I can get with the video camera. But we're going to be removing this transistor right here. So using a third hand and a screwdriver bit, I placed the new transistor on the board. I also put some flux on the board and then I soldered the three leads down. I found that was easier than trying to hold the transistor with a pair of tweezers because that big white connector that is the power supply, it gets in your way. It's just, it's a nuisance working around that thing. So I found this a, as an easier solution to hold that transistor down. All right, on to the power supply side. Same thing, four Phillips screws to remove. There's two on the top here, and then you'll tilt this up, and there's two on the underside of the power supply. Then you just remove those brackets, and then this thing is hooked on, I believe. No, it's not actually hooked on. Now, you're gonna want to disconnect these two connectors here. they are different sizes so you don't have to worry about which one's plugged in where. And it's the same thing. You release the tongue from the end. You squeeze it towards the wires. Or you can pull the tab up with your finger, whatever you prefer. And just pull that out. Now be careful. This sheet metal is a little sharp so you don't want to cut yourself on that because I'm feeling it right now. It's, it's a pretty sharp piece of metal. Okay, now for some odd reason, this power supply has been cable tied to the top of the unit. I haven't seen that before. I'm going to snip those cable ties so I can, can 
completely disconnect the power supply from the NAS because it'll be a lot easier to work on. All right, so with the power supply cables on your left hand side, you want to remove this Phillips head screw here. That one's in pretty snug. So, and then there's two when you flip it over on the other side. Okay, this one's a little different looking. The other one I did this resistor uh, fix on had a solid piece of uh, paper here. This one uses a clear piece of plastic. So this is interesting. So we have to remove this plastic temporarily to get to the resistor that we're going to be swapping out here. The plastic piece here um, was too inflexible for me to bend backwards and hold down with a piece of tape. So on the side where the, the wires are all coming out, there's two screws. You can see the one screw hole here. There's one on the other side. I took those screws out. I took the other screws out. There's a lot of junk going on here, so I don't want to pull it out from this side. But by just getting the left side of this board out, I can get to the resistor that we have to swap out here. Now what's interesting is this power supply is very different than the other one that I fixed. I've only done this, this will be the second time I'm doing this. Um, the components are laid out in a different uh, way. It's the green wire that we're going for. And this is what, is what they call the power on uh, wire. And uh, the resistor we're changing apparently lets too much current through to the transistor. So we're going to swap out the 392 resistor for a 103 resistor and that should resolve the problem. Now I'll take a still of this because once again my video camera is not going to be able to pick up the component numbers on this board. I'm showing the edge of the board so you can see that green wire and where it's going on, on the uh, solder pad. Then we're going to locate the 392 resistor, which I show here with those two green dots. That's the resistor you want to replace with a 103, which is a 10K. You could also replace it with a 1002, which is also a 10K resistor, but it's a 1% accuracy versus a 5 or a 10% accuracy. It's possible your power supply will look like this picture. This is the first time I repaired the power supply. I suspect this is what a real Synology power supply looks like. You can see the 392 resistor is very close to that green wire solder pad that I marked there with the green dot. So that's the resistor you want to replace again with a 103 or a 1002. So you'll have to, when you open your power supply, you know, determine which one you have and where the resistor is that you have to swap out. All right, so the moment of truth, I just um, closed this up. We'll turn it on. And okay, it turns on. It wasn't doing that uh, when it died. So I don't have any hard drives in here, so I'm not going to bother spinning this up all the way. I'll get the drives in it. Um, just to close up here, I mean, this is a difficult fix. The resistor change in the power supply, that thing is tiny. I mean, it's tinier than that transistor. I don't have one of those loops that goes over your head with a magnifying glass on it. I'm going to have to get one of those. I'm in my mid-60s. And it's getting harder and harder to see these smaller components. I have one of these loop things here with an LED light on it. This is okay, but you got to get the board right because you need that extra magnifier that's that little dimple here to see what you're doing. And it's hard to get the board in the right spot. It would be easier if I had one of those things that, wears, that you wear on your forehead. And then as you move around with your head, you can look at what you're doing. But with this, it's hard to get the board lined up right. And then the soldering iron has to be underneath this. Uh, this is hard working with this. I need to treat myself to something a little bit better. But even with a good magnifier,
you got to have some solder skills with surface mount devices to tackle this project. If you don't, don't do this if this is the first time you've ever touched a soldering iron or if you've just worked with traditional components from the old days. This is very different. It's not easy and you don't want to mess up the solder pads on these boards because then you're you're out of luck. You're going to have to buy a whole new uh, you know, NAS. And, you know, I mean, I know people say, hey, you know, this thing's almost... Well, it is. It's 10 years old now. It's a 2015 model. It's 2025. They work great. If you're just doing, you know, RAID 5, RAID 6 type storage or SH, SHR1, SHR2. I'm doing SHR2 on this. That's all I need because all I'm using this for is media storage for my Plex server. And I don't run Plex on this. I have Plex running on a Windows 10 PC. But just for basic NAS storage, you don't need one of those newer units. They don't really do anything for you. Now, if you're going to run applications, sure, then maybe you want a newer NAS. But these guys work great for storage. There's just no reason to spend a ton of money. And I picked this guy up with shipping for around $200. It cost me like a dollar to fix it. And yes, there's a lot of labor involved, but I'm retired, so I've got the time. It's worth fixing. It really is. Um, so I took out the 1K resistor. The 1K is no longer in here since I replaced the transistor and I replaced the resistor and the power supply. Now I misspoke during the video. I said the power supply voltage is out of spec. It's not the voltage, it's the current. It's providing too much current through that transistor which is causing it to fail. So I'm hoping now that the power supply has been modified that'll stop that transistor from going bad and maybe I will never need to solder this 1K resistor back on that motherboard. Time will tell.